I have to say that I am extremely impressed with lovable.dev for producing an app like this in the amount of time I had. Always remember to do your own research as some of the tools that I'm about to show in this series are very new. Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is very exciting because I'm gonna go through an application that I've built using lovable.dev. Now, Lovable had a competition and you've seen it in the previous video uh, where I compared some of the different AIs. I then have gone ahead and actually built an application as a competition submission, right? Uh, which I'm gonna show today. But then also make a few videos on how we can build apps with AI using tools like these. This is known as vibe coding, right? And you know what they say, if you can't beat them, then join them. So, well, here we are trying out some tools and it's always fun to just experiment and play around with these tools. So before I take you through the app that I've built, I would like to say that Lovable is a great platform. I'm not sponsored by them, but I've really enjoyed using it. It's one of those platforms where you can enter a prompt and then you can build an app. What makes this different is Lovable actually compiles and hosts this app so you can see your live updates. And it's a really nice working uh, environment working with this. Also on this dashboard, you can see there's the app we're going to look at. But you can also see many other apps that's been built by different builders and creators and developers. You also have the option to remix some of them into your own, which is quite cool, right? Because you can now go and see an app. If you're inspired by it, you want to add your own flair to it, you can go and remix it, or you can just build something from scratch. Now for me, I bought a few credits to test this out. So I've got a few credits left, which we are going to use in other videos to build out different little applications. So let me know what you want to build and we can try it out here live on the channel. Now let's take a look at the app that I have built for my submission for the competition. And this is how it looks like. This is also how the interface of Lovable looks like. You can prompt here on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you actually see your output. There's also some very cool features like connecting your GitHub, for your code repositories or connecting to Superbase, which gives you an actual database for your project. So it can do things like authentication and storing keys and images and all sorts of wonderful stuff. You can also publish directly and then it will give you a self-hosted um, URL that you can go to and show your friends. And I guess if you're happy with everything, you can upgrade and host it on your own site as well. But let's get to the app. So here's the app. You can see it over there, it's called scroll twice. So basically when I started the competition, I did not have a lot of time left. I basically had literally four hours left in the competition. So I had to think of a quick idea. And my idea was that we live in a society today where content is consumed at a rapid pace, right? In small chunks, bite pieces. So why does learning something have to be so, you know, big and bulky? So I thought, how can we create something that's fun for students to use. So I made this app, I called it Scroll Twice. Maybe it exists already, I don't know. However, um, I played around with the concept of asking the AI to build something where we can take content like a PDF or piece of text and summarize it into notes. We can then take these notes and then just learn from them. We can generate a quiz and we can also view the notes and study them in a TikTok kind of styled fashion. And when I say that, I mean, scrolling up and down, right? Uh, just how we used to uh, consume like short content. So I started there with the idea and a prompt and I gave it to Lovable and then it produced this app. Now I didn't produce it perfectly the first time. I had to kind of massage the data and massage the prompts, right? To fix uh, certain things, to make this landing page, for example. I provided it images that was generated by ChatGPT so that it could have this beautiful carousel behind the landing page as well. So all these things came about by looking at what it gives me, testing it out, seeing if it works, and then re-prompting it. Now, I also have had a look at the back of the code that it generates. And I have to say, the code that it generates is very, very clean. It is workable, meaning that if you are done with an app like this and you export it, you can actually continue building on the app. It doesn't give you a bunch of mashed up code which you can't make sense of. This is actually something that I can work on after creating it. So needless to say, let's click on get started. And this is the interface of the app. 
Now, what I asked it to do is to have the option of providing a text or PDF uh, content that we want to add. So I'm going to stick with PDF. I'm going to drag a PDF that was just created for this exercise, which is how plants work in photosynthesis. So yeah, very, very cool. So what happens is you provide the PDF and on the content and you say reduce PDF. Now what this will then do is it will go and reduce it and make those quick notes that we spoke about. So you can see the different tabs here at the top. Here's the reduce content now. We can also see a quiz and a study, which I'll get to. But it took this PDF and it took the core basis of what this PDF is about and made a few quick notes like this. You can see it condensed the content and gave us the uh, pointers that we need to study. And this is pretty cool because now we can just study this and potentially be ready, right, for an exam or something. So if we go to the quiz section, we can go here and we can generate a quiz. So we can click generate and this will now generate a quick quiz for us to fill in. Maybe I'll just randomly select things so we can test it out. Submit answer. Got two out of the three right by guessing. Um, but you can also regenerate the quiz, right? So all this was built purely with this prompt and massaging the data, like I said, you know, it, it might have done something that wasn't really good. For example, this quiz part, uh, it placed all the text really big and bulky and bold. And I had to ask it to make a multiple choice kind of quiz. So this is great, right? And then I added a study section. So the study section, you can also generate with flashcards, right? And then once it's generated, you can start your session. Now, this will give you this kind of feel of scrolling up and down between your notes. You can scroll up, learn about the next um, few points, and you can just sit on your couch and do this, right? I just wanted it to feel like a short form content scroll through. And if you view this on the mobile device, too, quite nice how it formats this, as you can see. So this was the whole premise of the app. Of course, you know, I had to build with the time I was allocated. And also, um, I was really impressed that it could do all of this in the amount of hours that I had left in this competition. And I added small things such as uh, refreshing everything. Also, when you are done reducing your PDF, you can actually go and download the notes too. And it's just a quick way of learning something or consuming a large amount of content. So as you can see, they can download this too. Now, I did do an integration with another AI, right? So I used AI to build this tool, but I asked it to integrate with Gemini. On Google, I went to go and create the Gemini API key, and I asked it to securely integrate my um, AI API key. And what it did was it used Superbase, and it asked me to um, enter the key so I can store it. Now, this is usually where you need to be very cognizant of security, right? Because you are inputting a very secure key uh, to a platform, but they've catered for things like this too, to be able to integrate with stuff like AI and API keys and such. However, I found it very cool to build with this platform. And I think for the app that it produced, the way it produced it, the way it could get it to uh, be very responsive was really nice. Now, my final thoughts before we end off, as a developer who is used to building things from the ground up, you know, building each and every line, it is quite scary seeing tools like this these days where you can just build it with a prompt and it actually exports very decent code and it does it in the fraction of seconds this makes me question you know where is development headed are developers going to be really needed in the future and that's all questions that we'll need to find out i do think that human oversight over these tools are extremely important especially when it comes to the security and the content sensitivity that you are dealing with remember we are giving our ideas to a tool that can create it. So there's a lot of accountability that's needed when you do so. However, I do find it exciting at the same time because as someone who builds things from the ground up, I know how long it takes. I know how long it takes for an idea to get into the hands of users and testers and experience what you want to build, which also means that we get to build things just so much faster. 
Now, at the end of the day, it's clear that AI is probably not going to go away. So the best thing we can do as developers to actually try and understand these tools, try out these platforms, understand and try to learn on how these tools are even built. That way, we can make sure that we can not only perform better at our jobs, but also make sure that we stay ahead of the curve. Making sure that we can control AI in a way where it is a tool. It is an enabler to us who wants to build. And thus, we don't have to live in fear for AI taking our jobs. And instead, we can embrace it a little bit. Therefore, I'm going to do a bit of vibe coding on this channel, experimenting with these tools to see what we can build, how we can improve our prompting in a way. I hope this is going to be exciting for you as it is for me and bring some value to you seeing what we're going to build with these tools. I'm very excited for that. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now.